we're going to begin with something that uh, already I've seen on um, you know social media. A lot of people have reached out because, guys, I uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's never going to end. It's never going to end. The coaching carousel is spinning again. As news breaks here on this Thursday morning, uh, I first saw it from 24-7 Sports' Matt Zenitz, always on top of uh, the breaking news. And Matt reported that sitting head coach, Georgia State, Sean Elliott, is going to be leaving to become the tight ends coach at South Carolina. Sean Elliott at South Carolina, you remember it before. He was an assistant on Steve Spurrier's staff after Steve Spurrier um, left his post midseason. Sean Elliott took over, so he was the the one-time interim head coach of the Gamecocks. So, again, I, I, I'm so sorry. The, co- the coaching carousel is just never, ever going to end. But the thing that's interesting here is that it's a sitting head coach at a program in Georgia State that was the bowl team, you know, that was top Georgia state. I'd say top half. They were wildly inconsistent throughout the season, but a two different seasons last year, a top half Sunbelt team for Sean Elliott. And he's leaving that to go be a position coach at South Carolina. Tom, big deal or small deal. Let's, let's figure this out because we can throw it on to, Kane Womack leaving his position as the head coach at South Alabama to go be defensive coordinator at Alabama. We could throw it on top of Mo Lindquist leaving his position at head coach of Buffalo, leaving that post to go be an assistant on Kalen DeBoer's staff at Alabama. Sean Lewis last year left his job as a Mac head coach to go be an offensive coordinator at Colorado. Not crazy, but we haven't seen a lot of this. Big deal or small deal with, uh, with Sean Elliott leaving Georgia State to go be an assistant at South Carolina. A bigger deal than some want to make it and a smaller deal than others want to make it. Yay. It's, now let's unpack it. It's uh this it's there's we're seeing this and we see this in a lot of things. When it happens one side is like, well, no, it's not because of NIL, and then the other side is it's definitely all because of NIL. The truth is it's somewhere in the middle. Sean Elliott's got plenty of reasons to leave Georgia State. Things are, you know, they lost most of the team. They're kind of stagnated. And there's a good chance, like if you looked at the SP plus ratings and returning production ratings from our friend Bill Connolly, it's not looking very promising for Georgia State in 2024. And then you look at his salary at Georgia State, the difference he's going to get being the head coach at Georgia State compared to what he's going to get as a position coach at South Carolina, probably not going to be that consequential if it's consequential at all. The difference is the workload. We can, you know, coaches, we've talked about this every show now for a few weeks. Coaches will bring up the NIL. They will bring up the transfer portal and they will bitch and they will moan about it. Just like they bitch and they moan about everything. But the fact is when it happens once, it's an outlier. When it happens twice, the eyebrow raises a little bit. When it's happening three, four, five, six times, it's an eyebrow raiser. Like you could say, it's not just the NIL and all that stuff. But how many previous off seasons have we seen so many sitting head coaches willingly take demotions? Like, you can reset your clock just by getting fired. Sean Elliott didn't have to leave Georgia State to go be a tight end coach because he could be afraid he couldn't get a tight ends coach job. He could have just gotten fired and then become a tight ends coach somewhere or something else. So there is something to it. Yeah, like these guys, the juice isn't worth the squeeze for a lot of these guys being the head coach anymore. The head co- Being a head coach used to be the goal. It used to be the ultimate to what you wanted to do if you were in this profession. And now a lot of guys are sitting in that chair and they're like, you know what? Not really enjoying it all that much. I'd rather just go coach football. So is NIL the only reason he's doing it? No. Is part is it part of the reason? Yeah. How many guys are winning are doing this? Far fewer. Well, he, right. He just got I mean, to a goal last year. They they finished Jeff fifth. Halfley got to a bowl last year. They finished fifth in their own. Chip division. Kelly got to a bowl last year. Yeah, but like the fan base has wanted Chip Kelly out. The fan base wanted Jeff Halfley out. Both guys, if they had slipped even a little bit, are probably fired. Sean Elliott, I think, is definitely fired after 2024, given that they just finished fifth in the division with the team that he liked in the preseason last year. And now, as you mentioned, they're 129th 
in returning production. I, I'm fine with using some of the NIL excuse on some of these. I think it's total BS here. Sean Elliott didn't build a good enough roster for them to have a good team coming back this year. And he, I think he knew he was going to be fired. But even though I don't think that's really what this is about. Mm. I think it's about two things. Number one, do you know he traveled separately from the team last year for road games? No. Because I found this article in the Columbia Star. His son and family still lives in Columbia from when he was you know, he was coaching at South Carolina. Mm -hmm. His son plays football for AC Flora. According to Columbia Star, he made every game last year. That is not something that I've ever heard of a head coach being able to do if he has a son who plays outside of you know the, the town in which you live. And especially not if your team has a road game. His daughter apparently goes there as well. I, it, it looks like the family still lives in Columbia. So I actually don't think this is a pay cut at all because the cost of living in Atlanta compared to Columbia is a significant downgrade, and you'll probably make more money, potentially, as South Carolina's tight ends coach and maybe run game guy if that's the job he gets. So I think he was going to be fired. Significant downgrade in the roster quality from a team that just finished fifth in their own division in the Sun Belt. I don't really buy into this NIL idea, specifically in this case, because nobody in the Sun Belt has NIL. Like, we know some guys who coach in the Sun Belt. They don't have NIL. They're not competing in their own league against teams that have like legitimate NIL really in, in really in any case. So probably not a pay cut gets to be with the family all the time back to where they clearly wanted to be given that that's like go to high school in Columbia didn't move to Atlanta. I'm just, I'm calling BS on this. Like I, I, I agree that it has probably never been more annoying to be a head coach, but not, in, I, I can't buy that for this one. But, to counter that, yeah, Georgia State doesn't have NIL. That's the damn problem. That's why part of the reason Chip Kelly's leaving UCLA. If you're Georgia State and but you're teams in the, in the Big Ten do have NIL, UCLA yeah, and they can not. just come and take your players from you but at teams, any damn time they want. And that's the why you're Belt tired of being the head coach because you're they're not stealing your players. Who has NIL. Like nobody in the Sun Belt has NIL. You're not competing against those teams. No, you're competing against. You're the competing fact against that Ohio State saying, "Hey, I like that running back. Let's go get him." Sure, and so is everybody else. Yeah, and league. that's why head coaches no longer want to deal with this shit because they're tired of having their players poached from them. They'd Not head coaches just going to be, be the fired. tight end like, coach. Mo, Mo Linguist was going to get fired at Buffalo if he turned another season like that, right? Yeah, Chip Kelly if, was going to get fired. Jeff Halfley was going to get fired if he turned another season. When and they it, reset they their clocks, people. right? They did. Reset Are you resetting clock. your clock by going to South Carolina right now? Absolutely. And you know what? If Shane, Shane Beaver gets Beaver fired, solid ground to you. Yes. I, here's the thing: you could probably be the interim. You were not going to get promoted out of Georgia State to another head coaching job with how things are going. That is the funniest take that I've heard this morning. The cover three tailgate, as things got rocking and rolling, somebody said there's blood in the water. <laughs> Sean yeah. Elliott smells his opportunity. <laughs> the, it, we've got ourselves a regular Ed Odron on our hands, boys. This guy is going to, he's like, you boys need an interim? I can step in right there. But look, so Jamar. I just want to say this. Okay. One, one final thing. When it's happening time and time again, and every single coach that's doing it is mentioning this as part of the reason for their thought process, how many of them have to say it, bud, before you actually believe, oh, you know what, maybe they're not lying? Give me, like, give me Ryan Day deciding to go take a coordinator job. Like, give me guys who are actually winning at big-time programs. But who make, Ohio who make State doesn't have an NIL problem. They're not the school that's losing players. They're the school no, that but they, but they have they still have a dealing with it problem. The head yeah, coach at a Big Ten it. program literally left to become the offensive coordinator at a Big Ten program. Yes, they have no NIL, and Chip hates recruiting and was going to get fired. Again, he was on the hot seat. He almost got fired this year. So they NIL is no not a problem, but it's one of the reasons the he left? Like the You're using it as one of the first examples of why he left, but it's not a problem. It's not having any impact on the decision. It's just one of the reasons. Got hey, it. Give me, give me a guy who wasn't about to get fired who's jumped and used NIL as a reason. I, I I think Anybody, you're any any head coach who is not seriously going to be on the hot seat this upcoming. How many year times has this happened in previous years? A couple times. Give me the example. Yeah, but has lottery. it happened six or seven times every off season? I think no. we have fewer guys. It's happened fired. once or twice every once in a while. But I for some guys, reason, everybody's deciding to do it now. But it's not a problem. It's got nothing I, to do with that. Don't believe anything they tell you. I'm I'm still waiting for some names of coaches who are in good spots 
who did this. Why would anybody in a good spot leave, bud? There have been coaches in bad spots every offseason for the last 20 years. They haven't been willing to take a demotion. They just sat there and got fired and taken their buyouts. But they're sick of doing this crap. They just want out That's a good point. They could have taken the buyout. Chip Kelly's independently wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Chip Kelly's rich as hell, so he can take a $4 million pay cut. Happily's not taking much of a pay cut. I think you yeah, guys are not, saying I am not because of NIL is... in different ways. You're not saying the same thing. Because of NIL has like nine different definitions. Because of you're bud, you're asking for somebody who's sick of dealing with NIL. Right. Like they know they're gonna get fired and then they blame the NIL as the reason they leave. You know, but I think that the conversation with Georgia State specifically is that Jamari Thrash was a phenomenal player that you developed and then he's gone. And sure. that if Sean Elliott makes a decision that says, I am tired of developing players and then not being able to capitalize on their best seasons of college football, I want out. Now, you can say that is because NIL, because there's an NIL opportunity uh, for, at a power conference school, but like strip out the because of NIL. I think that there is a way to look at that and say, if I am at a program that is developing power conference level players only to see them leave for their most productive seasons and go play other places, with NIL being a part of it, and I don't want to fight that uphill battle anymore, that has to be acknowledged as a factor for any of these decisions of I am not going to be the head coach of this program that has just become a farm system for the, the schools at the top of the pecking order. Sure. Totally agree with that, and it's a huge pain in the ass, but you, you do get paid pretty damn well to deal with it. Also, none of the programs against which you're competing – are able to retain their players either. So that's where I don't buy it as an analogy to the UCLA situation because there are teams in the Big Ten that can keep their players and retain them, whereas UCLA, you know, maybe not with their NIL situation. Nobody in the Sun Belt is keeping a good player if a legitimate team com comes calling. They're just not. So you're not competing against anybody who can retain big-time players. Yeah, and I just want to be clear. It's so frustrating. Also, I'm you can finish saying... fourth and fifth with two of your best rosters you're ever going to have. Like, Georgia State's probably going to really, really suck this year, and he was going to get fired. I'm not saying NIL and all this stuff is the only reason these coaches are doing it. I'm saying NIL and all this stuff is one of the leading factors for why these coaches are doing it. And the fact that we are currently in a state where nobody knows what the hell the future of this sport is as far as the kind of labor-student relation of what it's going to be. Sure. And these coaches have to deal with these headaches, and a lot of them just don't want to have to deal with the headache. And they all do have separate reasons for it. But this to pretend that this isn't part of it, which I think and I don't think you're doing this, bud. I'm talking about a lot of just other people are pretending, oh, it's got nothing to do with it. They're just using it as an excuse. That's that's just as disingenuous as what the coaches are saying. I, I think in many cases they like they are just using an excuse and, and they they just kind of tell friendly media who just parrot it without any kind of critical thinking. It's like, oh, he's leaving because of the NIL. I I, I like Matt Berry today tweeted out, and I think Matt's a sharp guy. So I, I talked to Sean Elliott at the Senior Bowl, and, and you know he was complaining about NIL. Guess what? He didn't jump last year. Georgia State didn't have any NIL last year. Why? Because he thought he had a good team last year because he had Darren Granger. And now that's now that Georgia State loses every damn player, right? Because most of them graduated because he had a very old team last year. Now he knows they're probably going to suck. And now all of a sudden it's that big of a problem that he, that he needs to leave for an assistant job in the SEC. To me, the bigger problem is they've already started spring practice. Oh, that's bad. I forgot that. That is yeah, that, a huge problem. That I wonder if, if they're allowed to pause. Is there actually Wait. a rule that you have to, to, to do your spring practice within a certain number of days? Because you only get a certain number of practices. I don't know. You do spread it out to account for spring break, that kind of stuff. Right. So maybe you pause it. Just say, hold on. <laughs> like Go back to the COVID years. We're just going to pause. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, it's incredibly <laughs> disrupt. I mean, it's it stinks because I I don't even know how to start the what's next for Georgia State conversation because they the stat the skeleton staff tries its best to keep everything together. I guess, um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a, a tough scene uh, for uh, for Robbie Callen's fighting Panthers moving forward. So, you know, I, I I wonder how many teams are gonna be able to walk into the TED. And walk out victorious. Plenty. Used to be Plenty. you never walked into the dead. <laughs> used to were... never walk into the dead. I mean, my guess here is that it'll be somebody who's somewhat connected to either App State or Atlanta because Charlie Cobb, the AD, was at App State right. for a while. And then he's been at Georgia State for 
for a long time. Scott um, Satterfield to Georgia State. <laughs> that's another job too that people are like, oh, that's 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 kind of a sleeping giant job. But the sneaky thing is, the cost of living in Atlanta is not real cheap. And if your head coach is only making seven fifty, wh- what do you think analysts make at Georgia State? Yeah. How, like, how far away do you have to live if you want to have a family? Like, does, I don't know if Georgia State actually has analysts. I assume they they have maybe one or two. A lot of G five teams only have one or two, but it's hard to keep good assistance in these major metro areas. USC and UCLA struggle with this as well, by the way. That's why you have to have like friendly boosters and, and the university helping out with uh, housing allowance and whatnot for some of your lesser paid staffers. Mm. Look, it is it is a move that just, you know, you write it down and you say uh, uh, Sean Elliott leaves to go become uh, the tight ends coach at South Carolina and throw all context out the window. You're like, okay, that's interesting. But the reason why it gets um, this this kind of discussion is that it is a, a storyline. It is, as Tom said, a bigger deal that people are making it out to be and a smaller deal that people are making it out to be. Uh, I think I saw in uh, in the cover, let me see if I can actually get this one because I, I meant to give credit earlier. NIL is both the reason and a scapegoat. You know? Mm-hmm. A reason, not the reason. Right. I, I think um, unlimited transfers is almost certainly a bigger reason, by the way. Yeah. yeah. If we actually want to talk about procedural stuff, the inability or the the ability for kids to transfer at will now, just as coaches can really at any time, as long as you pay a buyout, is I think more of a hassle. Because in fact, took sorry, transfer, okay. yeah. Say, Mike, you know, you're, you, this is your second show producing for us. I want you to go back in the audio, and I want you to dub over. Every time I say NIL, say NIL and the transfer portal. And yeah, the transfer yeah, portal. yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Is, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, Tim there, as you can see, YouTube.com slash cover three. Tim said NIL is a problem and a scapegoat. It's mm-hmm. great. It can work for everything. It's like one of those uh, words in the language that can just can mean all kinds of stuff. 